All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies class, I've been creating a series of video presentations that are based on the Mozilla Developer Network Learn Web Development Series. And I'm currently in the CSS portion and we are in the first steps and I'm now into the properties and values portion of that first steps. So as mentioned there at its most basic level, CSS consists of two components, those being properties and values. All right, so properties are assigned values. So this is the property color, that's the value blue. There's the property background color, there's the value yellow. There's the property color, there's the value red. And this is what it's being applied to and you can apply multiple properties. So whether it's one property or multiple, you put them inside of double quotes. So as it says, when a property is paired with a value, this pairing is known as a CSS declarations. And the putting it within the curly braces makes it a declaration block. Blocks are paired with selectors to produce CSS rule sets or CSS rules. Now notice, because this is a very important thing and it's in the important section there in yellow, as it says, CSS properties and values are case sensitive. Also, they must be separated with a colon. You don't even need a blank space afterwards, but typically you see one or more blank spaces. All right, so they give you some examples of things that you can use on this. So let's grab a couple of these. Some of these we've already we've already looked at, but that's fine. So I'm going to come in here. This is going to look a little weird for a second, but we'll fix it. So let's For now, at least, I'm going to get rid of all. I'm just going to comment out all this stuff. And notice the comments in here start with a, sl star, a slash star and end with a star slash. So I'm going to put a couple things in here. I'm going to say for my paragraphs, um, I want the font size. I'll make it nice and big to be 3 rem. I want the width of my paragraphs to be, I don't know, let's just say I want them to take up 25% of the screen. I want the background color to be pink. I want the color to be purple. Just making all this up. All right. And I want to put a border in there. And I want the border to be one. Uh, let's make it three pixels solid um, let's make it white okay so I'm going to put all that stuff in there the important I'm going to leave off for right now it's not going to work with that in there but we're going to get into the important in just a minute whoops so let's see if that did anything our font should be bigger the width of the paragraph should be smaller the background color should be changed the color of our font should change and it should have a border around it. So let's see if indeed that's the case. Now, probably the background color for our whole thing in here, the background color is probably going to be um, white to begin with, so we won't see this. So I could change the color, but let's just do this. Let's say body, background, and to show you that you can say background or background color, we'll just, right here, we'll use the background, and we'll make that yellow. All right, let's see if we made profound changes to what we're working on or not. And if not, then I probably goof something up. All right, so notice, what do we got? Our background color is yellow for the, our body of it. The background color in here is pink. It's got the border around it. The font size has been changed to 3 rem. All right, and you can see how you can make changes and immediately see the effect. 
Let's change that to 75%, and we'll just leave it like that. Should look a lot nicer then. There you go. Okay. All right. Let's continue on then. Now, there is something called important that we're going to get to in, in a, a bit. If a property is unknown, it says the declaration is processed as invalid. Fine. But there will be actually something that, that later we're going to use an important tag. I thought that was this, but it isn't. And we'll, we'll hit, to it, hit on it later. All right. We're using U.S. standards. So you have to spell it C-O-L-O. C-O-L-O-R and not the English or British way of doing it, which is C-O-L-O-U-R. Won't work. All right. It says, while most values are relatively simple keywords, there are some that can take on basically a function. This is kind of neat what they have in here because we're going to create a box. Okay. You say, I don't understand. Well, you will as soon as you see it. So that's got to go in here. And I'll put it down below our paragraph. So there, that will be our box. Just so we, it's easier for us to see, let's, let's do some work in here. So we're actually going to have a div within a div. This is our outer div. It's called outer. This is our inner div. It's called box. And the box will have some text in it. All right. So let's save that. And we're also supposed to put some CSS in there. I'm wondering why is that? That should be. I'm just kind of wondering why that's a different color. Normally that means there's something that's not being understood in there. And it looks like it's okay, though. All right. So the outer, when we get done, it should look like this. Okay. All right. Let's see if it does. Whoops. Don't want that. I want this. So copy, paste. So the outer, the class of outer, should have a border around it that's five pixels and solid black. So it should be a pretty chunky border. Inside, we should have 10 pixels of padding all the way around it. The width should be 90% of whatever the size is, but minus 30 pixels. The background color, as it says, should be Rebecca Purple. I don't know why this guy's got a fascination with that, but that's okay. So let's save it. Go back into here and run this. There it is. Now, the minus 30 pixels is the area that you see right here. All right. So it's 90%, which I guess probably this is probably the 90%. So minus 30 pixels. This whole thing is a calculation. And I think that's what the author was trying to show you in there. I don't know why you'd want to use that, but you're using a function to do it. All right. There's a rotate in here. See that? So they want us to come in and create another div and also put in some CSS in there. So let's do that. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to remove that div because that, that belongs in our HTML file. But there's our box. Let's um, go back to this one here. And where we've got this, let's just remove that for now and just div class equal box. All right. So I'm going to save everything. And in here, I'm going to save again. I don't need this anymore. Okay. So let's see if by doing the transform, the rotate, we have made it kind of stand on its side, so to speak. And you can see it's got a tilt to it, or whatever you want to call it. All right, so there's other things that you can use with this too. Okay, 
The next is CSS rules. Now, this is an interesting concept here. We got rules, shorthands, and comments, and white space, and that hopefully is about it. Good. Maybe we can finish that in this tape. So rules, as it says, provide instruction for what CSS should perform or how it should do this. Some rules are simple. All right. So as it says there, if we use this add import, it would bring a style sheet into a style sheet. All right. That's not one we're going to use very often, or at least, not, at least it's not one I use very often. But it says a common rule that you're likely to encounter is at media. What at media is going to allow us to do, and we'll do this later in, in the CSS section, is it allows us to, to continue on with what we were working on earlier with creating responsive sites. In that, the only thing responsive in our site, if you remember going back to our I Love Missouri site, the only thing that's responsive in this site, none of this is responsive here, this looks like it is, but technically it's really not responsive. All right. And the this is not responsive either. You'll notice it's not changing size. In the same way, this is not changing size. It's changing just its position on the page. The only thing currently responsive on here is the image. That's it. Again, this stuff is not responsive. All right. But when we get into media queries and we talk about those before, it is another way, it's another arsenal in our toolbox, so to speak, that will allow us to um, make pages more responsive. So we're going to put it off until then. <clears throat> oh, I guess they do want us to use it now. Okay. So what it's saying is, we want the background color to be pink. All right. And I think I may have that in there already, but mine is yellow. But we're saying here that once we reach a minimum width of 30M, which should be 480 pixels, okay, or around there, then it should turn blue. So let's grab this. If you write media queries like this, and this is a very simple one, and it's the first one we've seen, so it may or may not seem simple. You put them at the end, and I'm also missing a curly. So the whole thing is surrounded in curly braces. And this says when the minimum width is 30M, the background should be blue. So 480 and above, it should be blue. Otherwise, it should be yellow. Well, we've already used this one. Let's, let's try to change this to... How about orange? I want I want to change it to something that really sticks out here, or hopefully does. Now, when we look at it, and we refresh, it's orange. Why? Because it's more than 480. When we start to, to change the size of this, notice it reaches a point where it changes color. That's the 30M that's right there. So it's yellow all the way here, but once it reaches 30M, it becomes orange. All right, we could do this in a lot of different ways too. What we've shown in here is a very simplistic media query. When I say it's simplistic, what I mean is there's only one thing in it, and we'll add a lot more later. All right, there are shorthands. All right, and just so you see this, if we say this, padding, 10px, 15px, 15px, 5px, if we say that, this in blue is the same thing as saying this. Remember, I told you it's like a clock. So top, 12 o'clock, right, 3 o'clock, bottom, 6 o'clock, left, 9 o'clock. This works for padding and it works for margin just so you're aware of that. Here we're setting the background and we're adding a bunch of stuff as opposed to setting them simplistically. Now, what you may want to do is when you're learning this is to not use shorthands, 
to actually write it out longhand so you're sure you can tell exactly what's happening in here. That may or may, na may not make more sense to you to do it that way. All right, comments. I already showed you this. A CSS comment can be one or more lines. It starts with a slash star and it ends with a star slash. Okay, I don't, there's not much more to say about that. White space, as it says here, white space means actual spaces, tabs, and new lines. Just as browsers ignore white space in HTML, they ignore white space in CSS. So you can use it to provide readability. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually show you something very quickly here, which because we are finished. All right. So when we come back again, since we just did the how CSS is structured, next will be how CSS works. But before we get to that, just to show you again with the white space, and I've seen people do this. Some do, some don't. It's no big thing one way or the other. I'm going to change a bunch of this. I'm going to make it look like this. See that? In fact, I can even go a little wilder like that. And what you'll notice is that's that box that was purple right here. And if I refresh, it doesn't change a lick. In other words, what I did was I came in here and just line stuff up because it doesn't matter if you do that. All right, so that's pretty much it for this lesson. Again, once we come back, we're going to be going into how CSS works. See you with that shortly.